Well, hello, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boot Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies. You know that this literally does not work. You know, it is decision time for all the NFL teams. Right now, uh, you got some teams that are flush with cash to be ready for free agency. You have us, others, that have some cap issues and have major decisions to make on who stays and who goes. And, you know, it's funny because for the Dallas Cowboys, the Dallas Cowboys always seem to believe in their own personnel. That's one of the things you always hear Stephen Jones say. You know, we, we like our own free agents because, you know, we know what to expect out of them. Well, that, that may be true. But I think that this ends up, this philosophy ends up biting you in the ass. Because a lot of times you re-sign guys because of familiarity as opposed to fear. You know, there's an old saying of scared money don't make money. But sometimes you spend more money trying to hold on to what you have than getting something new. You know what I mean? Sometimes you just need to replace shit because it's broke. You know, people will say, well, how much is it going to cost? You know what I say? You know what? The shit is old. We fix this. Then something else is going to break on it. You're better off starting over with something new to work with instead of investing more money into the same thing. Case in point. Now, recent history, the last two years, will say differently about New England, although New England did play pretty good coming off of the red shirt year and starting out with the rookie quarterback. New England has had a philosophy of, we're not giving away gold watches. You will be gone before your career is up, so we don't have to worry about having to actually buy you a gift. And that philosophy actually worked really well for New England. Instead of paying a guy who's had a good season, they let him go in free agency and get back com uh, comp comp compensatory picks. Jeez, I can't speak today. Compensatory picks that will allow them to get some more players. And they are great at drafting players late in the rounds. If you remember, in 2018, after that season, Trey Flowers was considered a great defensive end. Okay, let, let me show you the statistics here. Okay, Trey Flowers, looking, I'm oh, sorry, over here. 2019, you know, he had been a standout player for years, for New England, you can look at the numbers, you know, 2017, six and a half sacks, 62 tackles, eight tackles for a loss. That is really good play. Uh, 2018, uh, 17, uh, I'm sorry, seven tackles, seven sacks and a half, 57 tackles, um, nine tackles for loss, 20 quarterback hits. And the question was, was New England going to re-sign him? Were they going to resign him? And they didn't. They let him walk. And he got himself a five-year, $90 million contract. $90 million. Let me say it again. $90 million. Now, his first year in Detroit, it was, it was pretty good. It was still like his other ones were. He got seven sacks, 51 tackles, uh, eight tackles for loss, 21 quarterback hits, and that was good. But then you start looking at the production. Then the next year, he went from seven sacks to two, and now he's starting to get injured. He only played in seven games. Still got paid. Then you go to 2021. Got injured again. Still got paid. One and a half sacks. The numbers just aren't there to justify holding on to him. And you can look at the trend there. You see, from the peak of 2018, um, excuse me, actually 2017, where it was six and a half sacks, 62 combined tackles, and 25 quarterback hits, he's been working his way down each of those years. So if you're looking at these numbers here, does that tell you that next year, all of a sudden, he's going to not get injured anymore? That he is going to turn around and end up being worth the money that they paid for him and that he's taken? Because I want you to take a look here at the contract. The cap numbers is what's important here. 
Because again, it's a five year, $90 million contract. And so his cap number this past year, where he played seven games, was $19.9 million. This year, it's $23 million. So the problem is, is this. You could restructure that contract and hold on to him. But a guy coming off of two back-to-back years where he was injured, do you want to kick the can down the road on that? I don't think you do. Would you want to kick the can down the road? Two down years, and you paid him $35 million in those two years. Because what that is, is that's throwing good money after bad money. You know, my my dishwasher upstairs before I replaced it. They came in and they said, well, the circuit board on there is bad. You know, we can change the circuit board if we can get the parts for it. You know, but it's like $380. They said, but with the age of it, chances are... The heating coil probably will go next. And, you know, and I said, okay, and how much is that? And, oh, you can spend another 120 on that and stuff. And I said, so what would be next? I said, well, he said, then what happens because of the age is the plastic breaks down in it, and so it starts to dry rot because of the heat and the water and everything else and stuff. So, you know, quite frankly, he said, you know, I get paid to fix them. Quite frankly, you're better off just buying another one because by the time we take care of all these things, you have bought a new one. It's like just throwing good money after bad. And that's what restructuring this deal would be if you're Detroit Lions, which is why they're talking about saying Trey Flowers is going to be cut. We're not getting $23 million worth of production out of Trey Flowers, and we got to trim the fat. I bring up Trey Flowers because Trey Flowers and Demarcus Lawrence are on that same trajectory because they both got their contract in the same year. And they both started going downhill kind of quickly because after D-Law got his contract, he ended up waiting to get the shoulder operated on. Okay, so he had the, the, the torn labrum. That season he had five sacks, 45 tackles, and 10 tackles for loss, and 16 quarterback hits. The next year he actually played all 16 games again, but only had six and a half sacks, 58 tackles, which was better, but only 10 quarterback hits. That dropped. This past year, missed 10 games, the exact number that Trey Flowers did. 21 tackles, 16 hits, seven quarterback hits. So, if you're looking at the Lions for guidance, and it seems like we keep hiring people from the Lions, um, Nick, I'll call you back, Nick. I'm in the middle of this. I'm almost done. If we're looking for the Lions for guidance here, they know we're better off cutting him and moving on instead of paying him. And this should be a lesson that we have with the Cowboys. You look back, how different would it be had we not re-signed Demarcus Lawrence in 2018 and spent the money that we did? Had we let him walk, we probably would have gotten a third-round compensatory pick because his value was really, really high. You've seen what we've done with third- and fourth-round compensatory picks, and now that you can package them up and trade them, they become more valuable. And this is a lesson that you have to look at when we go through and say, we got to re-sign a guy. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because especially as a player gets older, they get a little slower, they get more injuries, and now you have more problems because the guy you're tying up all that revenue with is now not really part of your game plan because he's not able to perform. And we've seen this over and over and over again with the Cowboys, and we keep making the same mistake. This isn't anything new. You can go through with Marion Barber. You can go with Terrence Newman. You can go with Miles Austin. You can go with Des Bryant. 
the list just goes on and on and on where we do these mega deals that look great on paper and they tell us we're set for years, but then they don't pan out. So this needs to be one of those things as we look at this. At some point, it's time to say, I got to cut bait because Demarcus Lawrence's cap number right now for this year is $27 million. And having had back surgery last offseason, having had now the, the foot problem, the broken bone in the foot, the labrum, are we sure that investing this $27 million or kicking the can down the road is money well spent? I don't think so. But, hey, what do I know? I'm a guy with a day job and a voodoo doll um, that just loves to talk too damn much. Um, tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern, we'll have our live stream. I hope you guys tune in. Uh, we'll be talking about the Dallas Cowboys as well as what they may be doing and thinking about here in free agency as well as some of these veteran players. And also, too, I'll be cooking around 6 o'clock tonight. Um, I think we're going to be doing a uh, portobello, portobello shepherd's pie that's keto. You know how we roll. You're such a-